Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be going through how to install CentOS 8. We'll first download it, then I'll explain how to flash it onto a disk. We'll boot that disk, and finally run through how to install it on an empty storage space of your choice. If you're new and stopping by to watch the install today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more installs. So let's begin downloading CentOS 8 first. If you go to uh, the centos.org website, which I'll put a link in the description below to, you'll get a page similar to this, and we want the Get CentOS Now button, or here in the nav bar, you can also select it as well. If you select Get CentOS, you'll see two options now. And that's because we've actually just received a new update from CentOS, CentOS 8, and they have announced a new rolling release called CentOS Stream. Now they'll be allowing the community to make more frequent updates and release those updates to the public through CentOS Stream. This is a pretty big step for CentOS and congrats to them. With that being said, we want the CentOS Linux DVD ISO. If we click on that, we'll get a bunch of mirrors here. So select a mirror that you want. Uh, some places might be closer to you than others. Uh, most of these are universities. As you can tell, you have uh, EDUs behind a lot of them. So we'll go ahead and just uh, select, let's do University of Chicago here. And this is the x86-64 image for 32 or 64 bit computers. We're gonna go ahead and select a mirror and then our download will start automatically. Next, we'll move on to flashing the ISO to a CD, DVD, or USB of our choice. Now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to launch the Belena Etcher app. So go ahead and launch that application. And this will help you flash the image onto a USB CD or DVD of your choice. I'll also go ahead and put a link in the description below if you want to download this application. You can also use any other application that can create a bootable disk to do that. The first thing we'll do is go ahead and select the image that we just downloaded. So here's the ISO file. Sent OS 8 x86-64. Go ahead, select that hit open. Next we'll go ahead and plug in the USB that we want to flash this on. Here we go. And it should automatically populate. As you can see, mine automatically populated. If you have more than one USB disk in there and you want to go ahead and uh, choose between them, you can hit the change button and you'll get a list of all of them in here and select the one that you want to go ahead and flash the image to. This will get rid of any data that's currently on the disk, so make sure you have a clean USB, CD, or DVD. Then go ahead and hit the flash button. It might ask you for an administrator password. Go ahead and put that in so you can allow the flash to happen. And after you flash the disk, you'll take it over to the computer, server, virtual machine of your choice where you want to install CentOS 8 on and insert it. Then you'll have to boot into your BIOS in order to change the settings around and select the newly created bootable disk to boot first. This is usually done by finding the correct key to boot into BIOS for your particular computer. Usually it's one of the F keys like F2 or F10. Then finding a tab, usually called boot order, and then exchanging the order so the bootable disk is first. After you have that set up, you will save and exit out of your BIOS, and then you should see a screen similar to this that will begin our install. And if you did everything right, you will have a similar screen to this where you can install CentOS Linux 8. And also, if you've made it this far, go ahead and take a moment to like the video. It really does help me out. We'll go ahead and select this first option for the install. Give it a few moments here while it gets ready. And uh, just to mention here that CentOS is based off the Red Hat Enterprise Linux and is a great distribution for use in the IT world because you can deploy and manage your servers more easily without the worry of massive changes between updates because they occur less frequently, keeping the distro stable for longer. Also, their admin tools are great. So the first screen we get here is uh, what language you want to use during the install process. English is fine for me. You can select whatever language that you might want to use. Go ahead and hit continue after that. Then we'll go through a few of these items here. Localization, so uh, we can set up a keyboard and once you're done, you can hit done up here. You can add keyboards here below. 
language support. We've uh, already been through this, so English was fine for us. A time and a date, so you can select whatever time zone that you're in. Today we'll be in uh, Denver. And uh, today's date is 9-24-2019. You can turn on and off uh, network time over here and set the time down here. Go ahead, hit done once you set the proper time zone. Installation source, you have the auto detect installation media. We won't worry about this because if you're this far, you have the local media installation source already selected. Software selection, you can select what type of software you want. Uh, I'm going to do the server with the GUI. It's easy to manage as it says, and it has a graphical interface, which is great. You can also put on all sorts of add-ons here on the right-hand side. Uh, a Windows file server, debugging tools, a mail server, uh, legacy Unix compatibility, development tools, security tools, all sorts of things. Go ahead and select whatever you want to build for your own environment. You also have a few other base environments over here mentioned on the left. The server, minimal install, the workstation. Uh, this is really just a desktop, as it says here for laptops and PCs, if you don't want all the server tools that come with. Uh, and then a virtual host uh, that's very minimal as well. Like I said, I'm gonna select the server in GUI and I'm not gonna install any add-ons right now. I can do that after the fact. Um, I'll hit the done. And then the installation to destination over here so you'll get a list of all your disks located in here. Select the proper disks where you want to install CentOS 8 on. Make sure that that disk is completely clean and doesn't have any data on it. I suggest using a fresh new disk in order to install CentOS on. This can be an SSD, HD of your choice. And once you have one that you want to use, go ahead and double click on here and that will once you have this checkbox, it means that it is selected. Uh, the storage configuration, I'm going to use the automatic, and I'm not going to encrypt my data at this point. If you want to go ahead and add any network disks, you can add them at this point here. I'll go ahead and hit the done since I've selected the installation destination. And it will just verify real quick, and that uh, yellow exclamation point will go away. Kdump is enabled there by default, and... Uh, the network and host name is not connected as you see and that's because it's currently off You can go ahead and select that to on and it will Automatically detect your Ethernet adapter and get an IP address and all that fun stuff uh, Once that adapter is selected and running this may help you get some packages from the internet if necessary Maybe you have the minimal installer that uh, you're trying to install with which will require the uh, persistent internet connection in order to get uh, packages down from the web. Go ahead and uh, once this is enabled you can hit done or you can select not to enable the wired connection. Security policy you can also put in a place where you would like to fetch a security policy from if you have one. I'll let you do that uh, and then finally we will begin our installation of CentOS 8. Now it's telling you that there's a couple things that it would like you to fix and that is the root password has not been set and no user has been uh, created. So let's go ahead and set the root password right now. You'll just type in a password that you would like to use and once you are done, you can hit the done button up here. You'll confirm the password as well. Oh, I got a uh, warning here that uh, if I want to use this password, um, I'll have to hit done again. This is probably because it's a weak password here. I'm sure yours will be uh, a lot better than mine. So I'm going to hit done because uh, that's the password I want to use. You see that the user creation is now uh, not highlighted in yellow or has that yellow exclamation point. You can still create a user, however, and I'll create one anyway called Savvy Nick and the username I'll put a password in here and another password. You can go ahead and select advance if you need to uh, edit more settings here, but I'm fine with these minimal settings for a user here. It says here at the bottom, the, the password fails the dictionary check 
And uh, in order to use that password, you'll have to hit done twice. So just like we did with the root password, I'll have to hit done twice. I'm just going to use the uh, password that I wanted. You can make yours uh, a lot harder to guess <laughs> once you uh, install your own CentOS 8. One thing I will mention is that you don't necessarily need to create another user if you just want to use the root user and set up a root password. It will allow you to do so and it won't complain here. At this point, we'll go ahead and just wait for the uh, installer to finish. Now that the installer is done, go ahead and uh, we'll hit the reboot button. Give it a few moments here and make sure to remove any installation media. And after things are done booting up here from the installer, we will get asked to accept the license from CentOS. We'll make sure that we do accept the license agreement. And then after we're finished here, as long as you agree with the agreement, go ahead and click finish configuration. And a few more things here to boot up. And now we got a login screen. Since we created a user, go ahead, put the password in for that user, sign in. And welcome to your new CentOS 8 server installation with the GUI. Congratulations, guys. You've successfully installed it at this point. You can go ahead and run through the welcome if you'd like. Uh, it will select uh, what keyboard you want here, if you want the privacy on or off, for location services, and a connect accounts if you want. You can skip that and then you're ready to go ahead and start using CentOS Linux. Again, uh, congratulations on this. And here's just a simple getting started for the GNOME desktop. If you wanna go ahead and review some of the common tasks here, you can and get yourself started using CentOS. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please like, comment, and subscribe below. We'll probably install some other, we'll probably, we'll probably dive deeper into some of the new additions to CentOS 8, since this is a brand new release. Please let me know what you thought about the install, and thanks for watching.